Okay, hi everyone. We continue with um, Percel's uh, login programming tutorial. So um, uh, it's going to be a few um, like general notes, but we also are going to discuss how to share functionality of uh, Percel's using the um, using the programming, uh, including C sharp. But also, you'll find out that you can also use a Python code or R code and uh, without a lot of headache actually so okay but probably it's going to be some general questions which uh, make sense to answer right now for example um many people ask themselves should i listen this uh, tutorial if uh, like if i'm programmer or i'm not programmer well uh, let's maybe say a few sentences about that so if you are let's say if you are not programmer um, I think uh, this uh, tutorial could be still useful for you because you can uh, see kind of how programming can be, uh, how programming is like, uh, how how can you actually, how Perseus works from inside. And um, and in general, I think it's also uh, cool to program, it's um, uh, boost your career and in general, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so. But for the programmers, uh, for people who are familiar with uh, Python or any language, it also can be useful because you can integrate your functionality to Perseus, uh, make it accessible to collaborators into your lab. And it's actually, uh, we have a few stories, it's actually working really well. Perseus plugin program. So uh, there's a few general questions about uh, um, uh, Perseus. Uh, like, but let's imagine like some discussion. Okay, Perseus is actually really, really user-friendly and functional rich software. And uh, personally speaking, I'm using uh, Perseus a lot, even though I have uh, a lot of experience and actual everyday experience programming on Python and C Sharp. Uh, but I found out Perseus extremely useful uh, to, make, um, um, to make a quick analysis, uh, uh, to play around with dots, to see annotation. And I found out that's a really very user-friendly software and, and very um, uh, very advantageous to use. But is there any disadvantages? And uh, even based on the uh, based on your questions uh, on a Q and A, uh, like one of the big questions which raising uh, like which is happening, this question appearing every summer school, uh, is there any way to um, block uh, the steps of um, a processing in a Perseus and reuse it for another data set. And uh, this is actually totally makes sense because imagine that you're working in core facility, uh, you have uh, uh, the same pipeline all the time running and you just want to, um, you want to apply the approximately the similar data, the same pipeline. And actually uh, this, uh, uh, we were answering um, uh, this is gonna be in, in, in to-do list, but actually uh, now we are uh, really close to actual implementation and uh, I think uh, next summer school already showed that. Now uh, we're going to show the example. So, okay, uh, in Perseus and uh, in MaxQuant, sometimes uh, it's crashing. So it uh, can happen with any software, but what should we do in this case? Uh, so in this case, I recommend you um, to write uh, your explanation. How to, what's mo most important, how to reproduce your bug. So um, maybe it's, uh, the simple data set, uh, which uh, parameters you use, which version of Max Quant Perseus you use. And of course, we are really prefer to, if you use the latest version in order to reproduce it. And um, and for, if you actually found the bug, uh, you can submit your report in um, on Utrecht, uh, sub submit report of Max Quant about Perseus. And you can also submit or ask some general question about uh, Max Quant and Perseus on, in the Google group. Um, and uh, I think the cool thing about uh, the Google group, the Max Quant and Perseus Google group, that's um, there's a it's a really community community wise effort. People already uh, people who are users of uh, Max Quant and Perseus help to another users, and it's uh, helping to actually us a lot as well. So um, cool. But can I include a new functionality? Imagine um, I have uh, some cool R script. Uh, which uh, calculating COP score for proto forms. And uh, what if I would like to include it to Perseus and everybody can use that and uh, in very in user-friendly can form, you can integrate it in the pipeline and all those things. So can I include the new functionality without bothering you again? So, and then the answer, yes. And, um, and uh, so let's plug in you in. 
Uh, but the truth is that um, this idea of the plugins, uh, that's um, uh, some function, we kind of making agreement uh, using interfaces and people writing um, functionality, either parsing files, either doing some data analysis, is becoming actually so um, advantageous, we see that, that it's uh, passing uh, from one software to another software in our, in our development team. For example, uh, MaxQuant Live, it's a, um, it's a, a software which uh, based on the plugin, plugin programming, essentially. So there's a lot of pl uh, plugins which you can insert, you can remove, you can try all different things. And of course, this is, um, it's also applied for the raw file reader in the Max Quant, as Jürgen mentioned. And of course, it's applied for the per service because this is very natural for per service because data analysis, it's really a piece of art. It can be done totally uh, different ways and there's an infinite amount of ways to do that. So, and as I said, per service um, is, um, you can, there's a kind of, per service is based on the idea of the plugin programming. And, and what does it mean? That we, um, as uh, developers of per service, uh, we are, um, making an agreement uh, that if you would like to write plugin, uh, this plugin at least should have some functionality. This is actually really agreement like between uh, um, like electricity grid providers and uh, electricity users. So, you know, you, if you go to England, there's a one socket uh, and the plugs. If you go to Europe, there's another socket and plugs. So basically there's a society agreement between each other. And this is exactly the same story here. So we have agreement between uh, us developers of Perseus and maintainers of that and the plugin, possible plug, plugin programs in the future, developers, uh, community of developers. So, um, okay. So the thing is that MaxQuant and Perseus, if you uh, like look from perspective of developer, um, there's a actually a shared code base. There's a code, a, a com buyer base um, library, which contains a lot of tools, a lot of data analysis related, a lot of data processing, and actually MaxQuan is using that, and also Perseus is using that. And this is a code base, and it's actually very advantageous. Once you include some functionality in code by base, it's accessible everywhere in Perseus and MaxQuan. And again, and this, and what's really important, this code, uh, code base is actually pretty much accessible. You can read it, and uh, as you see, just a second. Yeah, I haven't signed up, so it's uh, everything is open. You can read the code, and uh, uh, this is uh, open, open, uh, open code. So, also, additionally to that, on the, on the top of that, um, uh, Perseus is, um, as I said, constructed on a, on a plugins um, infrastructure, and this uh, most of the Perseus you know, plugin infrastructure is uh, is uh, actually de deposited in this uh, GitHub link. So you can go there. And you can read um, how like plugin photons works. Uh, you can go to Perseus plugin leap and check uh, like a lot of activity, uh, which kind of we are using. For example, if you go to quality, uh, create quality matrix. So uh, there's a lot of things going on here. And this is actually very, very advantageous uh, that you can just open it and read how it actually works. You can open the file and see if you can see the code and it's actually the code which is working in Perseus. Okay, cool. Um, but, and previous day show you that uh, Perseus is actually excellent software and uh, but like, the, but all activities in uh, Perseus can be subdivided on five types of activities. So upload activity, processing activity, processing activity, analysis activity, multi-processing and export. So upload, you're just uploading data using this activity. Processing, you can you can just taking the uh, matrix, doing something with that, uh, and uh, processing it somehow, and uh, bringing back like another matrix. Analysis analysis activity provides you ability to plot something to make some you know, this small square uh, on a right down uh, uh, angle. Multi processing allows you to merge database uh, <laughs> databases to merge uh, different tables, and export allows you to export your files. So and actually, let's go for uh, directly to examples. Um, second. Uh, just opening the, the version, um, the Maxcon Summer School version of Perseus. And you see there's um, on, uh, on uh, top, there's a uh, load activities. 
there's a processing activities, there's analysis activities, and there's a multiprocessing and export. Okay, so, and the truth is that you can write yourself all uh, any type of activities in Preserve. So any out of these five activities in Preserve. So you just can write a small code and uh, plug it in and use it. And, um, and usually uh, our explanation starts from that. So, um, you know, these plugs and sockets uh, in terms of programming, this is actually interfaces. So interface is a declaration that you have to write such functions, you have to write such uh, fields and all those things. But this is very complicated, especially if you are um, really haven't touched object-oriented programming, that is getting in incredibly exponentially complicated really quick. But and um, after a few years of uh, actually teaching how to make up plugins uh, for Perseus, we realized that the best way uh, like, for, like for, to teach how to do that is actually go from existing code. It's, it's actually um, how kids are learning to do things. You're just taking code, you're just taking things, breaking it and, uh, and, uh, and uh, understanding something from the world, about the world. So this is exactly what we're suggesting to do with pre-sales. Um, try it out, try it out. So, okay, but okay, now I would like to program uh, per service plugin, what do I need? So you, of course, you can program, um, uh, okay, you can program, uh, we're gonna program on C sharp. So because uh, uh, Max Quand and per service, essentially almost whole code data, uh, whole, whole code base written on C sharp. And uh, C sharp is nice language. Uh, it's very similar to Java. Um, but if you if you know another language, it also can be very advanced just to learn it. But this is, uh, as I said, it's not strictly necessary to know C sharp to make a, a, a per sales plugins. We're going to discuss it soon. But you know, C sharp an awesome language. You can even program on Unity. You can make uh, uh, games, and um, yeah, C sharp is a really cool thing, by the way. So in order to program on C sharp, there's uh, I have to say almost two options are most common. Uh, first option is Visual Studio Community 2019, and we really recommend it to, to do it through uh, Visual Studio Community 2019. But I've also tried several times and I found really um, advantages to use a Rider. So Rider is really also cool software for that. So, but if you go to the website of uh, Visual Studio, uh, you may see that soon it's gonna be Visual Studio 2020. We're gonna make one more video probably after it's released. But anyway, that's nothing changed actually. Not much things change uh, from version to version. And uh, if you want to download, uh, download, download Visual Studio on your computer, you can download Community version 2019. And uh, Community is uh, free for individuals, developers, academic users, and open source. It's exactly who we are. But you can use a professional enterprise if you have this license. But remember, Community is for free, and you can easily download it. So I already did that on, um, on, uh, on this computer. So and we're going to use that. OK, cool. So, but today um, uh, I didn't find uh, a joke about potatoes. I but uh, uh, we're gonna make a precious example for beginners, and we're gonna make a head and tail um, functionality in a, in a C sharp in a, in precious. Uh, what do I mean by that? Imagine it's a bit um, destructive functionality, but imagine that you have a huge matrix. You analyze twenty thousand uh, proteins. And um, and uh, and uh, the thing is that it's a huge database, it's a huge matrix. And you just what you would like to do, you would like to have just first thirteen lines of this uh, matrix. Uh, you want to like to have a head of this matrix or tail of this matrix. It's actually many, may, probably many of you who are using Linux familiar with these two commands, head and tail. But you know, cat is also nice. Okay, cool. So how are we gonna do that? So, so I have to also make um, uh, some uh, disclaim that usually when we are doing this uh, presentation, it was stretching for two hours. So for sure, it's, I'm not I, I gonna I'm not gonna do this this today. But as a result, I'm not gonna cover much. But I will try the best. So how are we gonna do that? So first of all, we have to open Visual Studio. So we have to open Visual Studio, and uh, we're going to create a new project. Um, 
new project. And now we have to specify uh, which type of project we are going to use. And we're going to use a class library um, in C Sharp. You, um, and why? Because we would like to write plugin. So it's not a console application, it's not a web program, it's actually a library of functionality. So that's why we're going to use class library. Okay, so how are we going to call it? So we're going to call it. Um, so just a second. Okay, so mm -hmm. so the project gonna call, gonna be called. Um, we, we're gonna go uh, make head uh, function. Yeah, so we can also of course call it head. We can call it how we want. But the truth is that we have to uh, write plugin here, and this is actually very important. Otherwise, Perseus will not find it. Will not find this plugin which we're gonna build, which you're gonna put in a bin folder. And actually, if you open this. Um, very complicated bin folder, you might find out that there's already a lot of plugins here. Yeah, as you see, there's a lot of plugins which exactly exploring this uh, plugin programming in Perseus. And all of these plugins, uh, the name of them starts from the word plugin. And this is crucially important for Perseus. If you write your plugin and it's going to be totally comply with interface and everything going to be okay, but the name will not contain at beginning plugin, then Perseus will not find it. And unfortunately, um, it will not be visualized in the GUI. So as a result, we have to call uh, project name plugin. Uh, I will call it plugin head and solution, which combines uh, different projects. I will go call it, um, uh, let's say, um, Perseus, Perseus tutorial. Uh, that's not necessary and not really important. But this actually, this thing is actually really important. Target for a framework. As you see, there's a lot of options here. There's a different, um, I will not go into the details, but currently we are supporting Net Standard 2.0. And I, uh, um, I highly recommend to like targeting to like to comply with a runtime of Net Standard 2.0. But uh, that's really right now not necessary, just uh, use the Net Standard 2.0. Um, yeah, actually, joke aside, but yesterday I tried 2.1 and this was crash. So, um, don't repeat these mistakes. Okay. Sounds like here we go. So we're here. Okay. So okay, come back to the question. What we want to do? We would like to make some functionality which takes top um, let's say 13. Oh no, top 12, because it's summer school 12. Yeah, yeah. So let's make a functionality which takes matrix and make uh, take the first. 12 lines and um, um, and making a new matrix with just first 12 uh, lines. And um, then how should we do that? And as, as, I, as I said, um, in the case of uh, Perseus programming, uh, plugin programming, I highly encourage you actually already uh, to check how it's written in Perseus. What do I mean by that? Okay, if we want to do this, let's maybe um, check um, how can we do that? So what's the simplest functionality in Perseus? And the simplest one is uh, actually the clone. What clone is doing is just taking the matrix one. Let's click on that. Without asking any parameters, as you see, it's taking matrix one and copying it. Pretty dummy one. So you see this like 100, 100 there and there. But you know, it exists there. If you want, you can use that. But this is a clone functionality. Actually, you also may uh, uh, find out that uh, the logo is pretty funny. Uh, so there's a ship here. Also, one tiny thing which I all the time also like it, uh, it's a Fisher exact test. Fisher exact test. I found this extremely nice. Also, actually, Hawaii plot. Uh, you see the flower. Uh, it's also pretty beautiful. OK, cool. Um, clone functionality. So how? How should we find how clone is actually written uh, in a, in a, in a Perseus? So I remember I told you that the whole uh, the whole code base can be uh, is accessible for you. So in order to find out how to written the, how the clone functionality is written, probably you have to go to the plugin Perseus plugins uh, database. So because there all plugins are described. So for that we have to go to Perseus plugin lib. And maybe, you know, I don't remember what it is exactly. And then 
I will just search. I hope it. I will find it. So clone function. Oh, clone clone processing. It's exactly what we need. So clone processing, and believe me or not, but this is exactly what is uh, making this clone functionality. I, and uh, let me prove you. You see this description: a copy of input matrix is generated. Dot. So if we uh, scroll again on a clone, we see exactly this message. We see exactly this message: a copy of the input matrix is generated. And also funny, you know, the ship button uh, image dot png. Probably you can understand what's what is the image there. So um, that's pretty cool functionality. So then uh, let's do it like in Stack Overflow style. Just let's copy that and insert here. Probably we're gonna have a lot of problems initially. Let's check. Let me bring back the name properly. Like it's gonna be plugin, plugin head. Okay. But you see, there's a problem. Uh, you see a red a red light, some highlighting with red, it's all the time means something going on wrong. Uh, and, um, and in this situation, something, yeah, something for sure going wrong. So it's saying that it's importing some libraries, basically as per service API. And uh, there's a just using, uh, there's a just, we just cannot find this library. It's just missing here. And that's true. This, this is Perseus API library. It's a library which describes uh, exactly how socket and how um, plugin sh a plug should should look like, and basically provides uh, like general um, general parameters, general descriptions, and like including bitmap. So how how can we resolve this issue? Um, and uh, how and the general um, um, generally we do there's a basic two ways to do that. So one complicated way. So you can go to the um, you, can, you can go to the Perseus plugin, com, uh, compile it. Sorry, you can compile it on your Visual Studio. You have to, but for this, you have to download. It's a, a really a lot of headache. And honestly, I found out myself that's the easiest way to do that. Uh, it's just like to take um, Perseus Leap, uh, Perseus API file from here. You see, it's here, and to take base Leap as file also here and how can we do that so we have to somehow import these two libraries deal in in C, in uh, windows world all these libraries called dll so this is a um, um, uh, li shared libraries which you can use in any software so um, and how can we do that in um, in visual studio how can we make our project aware about this library we have to click um, dependencies right click and um, I just realized that I'm not behaving really nice. Um, probably now it's going to be better. Yeah. So now you see my cursor. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Just one moment. Okay. Cool. So what we have to do here, we have to click dependencies at the project reference. And uh, we have to click browse. Um, yeah, let's make for, for purity. We just uh, go to this folder, your service, um, da -da -dan, beam, and we go here. And as I said, we're going to add uh, base, lib, uh, base lib s uh, DLL file and their service API. Their service API, wait, oh, yeah, we, we see it here. We're going to do that. And uh, let's just click OK. Now the whole project gonna be aware about the existence of these two DLLs, and as you see, it's working. So it's totally working. It's uh, it's really nice. So maybe that now we have uh, we can really just easily rename it. Let's say uh, head processing. Um, do we need some uh, image? I don't think so. We need image for the head. We can use the image of the cat, but I have to find it. Let's for now say null, so we don't have anything. So um, uh, what's the description? So uh, take um, uh, like n. Uh, let's take let's say take first uh, first twelve lines uh, from matrix. 
So um, it's actually help output. It's actually not really strictly necessary. So I can just uh, uh, keep it um, keep it as, as nothing. So the name of activity this is actually important because this is exactly how the activity is called. You see, it's called clone. So in our case, let's call it head. So heading is actually important. So you see, heading basic, and that's why. Um, activity clone is located in um, sub tab uh, basic. This is, uh, as you see, it's actually very um, good um, good way to keep uh, different functionality to sort somehow functionality. Or as you imagine, it's going to have hundred functionality and you're going to be quickly lost. So, but you know, if we're going to take those twelve lines, probably basic is not the best. Um, so probably filter rows is going to be the best. And let's do it here. Filter rows, cool. So, um, and next, what can be what can be important? Uh, the link, URL link. So, probably uh, the best would be to put the link on the GitHub, where the source, uh, the, where the code is located. But for now, uh, let's uh, put the link on the Max One Summer Scope. Summer Scope, and I just put it. Cool. So. Um, yeah, sounds like we did something. So of course it's not head processing, uh, but there's already something. So what we did here, so we have now already um, some um, pro processing activity, which is uh, doing the same uh, doing the same thing as clone, and this is done thanks to the this functionality process data. In this process data, and for now just believe me. So there's a M data, so the matrix actually is input. There's a parameters um, and many, many, um, many, many parameters which we specified before. And uh, this is not really important right now. Then the second one, the last one would be important, process info. So if, for example, something gone wrong, you can write a message there and this uh, user-friendly message gonna be described to user. Okay, so, okay. So, uh, and get parameters. So how are we gonna do now? How should we proceed? So I would like to actually really start already uh, this dummy clone. You know, it's not head yet, but I would like to already make that because we're gonna see the filter rows and uh, what's gonna happen. So for that, I have to build, I have to build this solution. And this process uh, is going right now. Uh, first time it takes all the time, a lot of time. So you see, and this folder is the folder with the build version of the li our library small, uh, but you know it's fair, uh, is actually located. So if you go there, we see here a plugin head.dll. No surprise, that's exactly what we wrote. And this is two libraries which we just copied, which are actually needed for the uh, for the whole uh, uh, plugin programming. So, okay, let me do this thing. So I'm gonna locate uh, on one side, I'm gonna locate uh, our folder where everything is compiled and another side is going to be preserved. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna just going to take the uh, plugin head.dll, the library which has our fake clone activity, copy it, and now I move it to the bin folder. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's nothing will appear here. And the reason is because this libraries are not dynamically allocated. We're not dynamically taken from the uh, from the uh, like uh, from the bin folders. For that, you have to close uh, per service and you have to open it again. Okay, and if you look right now on the filter row, we see a head, we see our functionality which you just wrote. And you see this even the uh, helper take first, take, take first uh, 12 lines from matrix. It's exactly what we wrote. It's ex and, and you know, if you think about that moment, it's actually impressively cool. This is the first plugin which we wrote. It's wow. I mean, daily, please. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and but for now, unfortunately, doing nothing actually useful. You can you can make uh, some random matrix uh, cool. Uh, we can make um, filter rows head, and you see it's working exactly like a clone. It's just cloning, doing nothing, and that's it. Okay. Let's make something useful then. So let's uh, make some functionality which actually takes the first 12 lines. Okay, that's gonna be simple or hard. So in order to make it actually simple, let's again come back to this idea. 
how can we actually program uh, your CEOs? Uh, we have to just go for examples. So, and uh, which example is going to be convenient for us? So we're going to filter uh, several rows. We have to take several rows. And honestly, from year to year, we're actually going through the filter rows based on the random sampling. And this actually makes sense. So if you go there, it's asking, it's uh, tells you take hundreds uh, rows and uh, just by chance just by chance and uh, that can be actually very useful so let's check out check it out how it's written so filter rows based on the random sampling maybe we just google it in precious plugins uh, filter rows uh, based on sa random sampling Wow, and you see, we found it. It's exactly this activity which we are searching for. So this is a filter random rows. And you see, this is I matrix processing. It's exactly the activity which is out of five possibilities doing one matrix processing. And you see, it has the same set of the uh, uh, variables. Why? Because this is, because it uh, agrees with the um, with interface and applying all this interface. There's a get parameters, which we come back soon, but there's also processing data. And that's actually what we need to know how to do. So you see it's generating some random value and it's random seven. And you remember maybe many people of you um, complain that sometimes some functionality is not re totally reproducible. Um, but uh, for that, we can say that, of course, there's a, when you're doing um, a pure mutation based FDR, uh, there's of course randomicity going on there, but usually uh, we kind of, we are making, uh, uh, this randomicity it's pseudo random you have to keep in mind so as a result we can provide some seed uh, and this uh, starting from this value this function going to digest this value and generate some random value which is going to be really far away from the seed and usually we're actually putting some seed in order to kind of to really pr reproduce the data so if it's not then it's actually a mistake so and uh, i would rather complain a bit but okay so but what we see here so yeah it's c-sharp code but you know it's pretty understandable what's going on here we had actually making array of rows. So if out of, let's say, thousand of rows, we'd like to take zero, fifth, and tenth uh, row, then the rows array will consist of three values, zero, five, and 10. So, and lately we're taking precious plugin utils, filter rows, new, and we're doing something here. And let's maybe check what we are doing there. If we go to this functionality, actually, it's a really cool uh, feature of the GitHub right now. So uh, you are providing the matrix, you're providing parameters, you're providing rows, but essentially there's a lot of if if statement here, but essentially this line is most important to us. We are taking the matrix and extracting set of the rows. And let's do that. So let's just take that and insert in our, um, in our code. So processing, cool. So, and now we doesn't we don't know what rows is we're gonna create it and it's uh let's say we remember we discussed with you we're gonna extract first uh, we're gonna extract first te, uh, 12 12 rows and we're gonna first of all create an array of uh, integer values and the length of that is gonna be n so it's 12 and next we're gonna make cycle four uh from zero until n i plus plus don't please be afraid of that. This is C sharp programming is really awesome, awesome tool, and uh, there's really not, no hard to study that. Yes, Billy? Yes. <laughs> cool. So now we, as you see, we're extracting first twelve lines. Now we're building that. Uh, we're building that. So it's going to be exactly the same folder. You see, it's created exactly twenty two. We're going to move it, but if we move it, we're going to get to error because Preserve is already using this library. So let's close the preserves before. Let's move uh, this library to the bin folder. Yes, replace. And let's run preserves again. So let's uh, generate random array. So now we find our filter rows here exist. And voila, something useful happening. You see, it was 100 items before, 100 uh, lines before. But now we have 12. And that means that we actually choose uh, the 12 first lines. And this is exactly the 12, first 12 lines which we see. So the 
first we are actually doing something useful, cool. So we make the head. Uh, oh yeah, I don't want to save it. Uh, no way. So what we're going to do next? So, you know, 12 sounds like a magic number. That's a bit unpleasant. So imagine tomorrow I would like to say, I would like to take the first 15, then I have to write this plugin again. And it's kind of somehow a bit annoying. So, but probably the best would be here to ask user actually about how many rows it prefers. So, and that's where the get parameters comes in. So in the function get parameters, what you're doing, you just basically can combine the set of parameters which you want. And in our case, uh, this parameter are gonna be, uh, and for the sake of time, I'm sorry, I'm gonna just write integer parameter. So it's gonna be one integer number. But as I said, you can easily inspire um, by Perseus plugin. So you, you can find out that's, let's go here. This is exactly the uh, filter random rows. And as, as you remember in filter rows, we're asking how many random rows we want. And this is exactly this parameter. You see this integer parameter number of rows. And by default, it's written row count, such and such. And uh, yeah, maybe I just take it actually. Why I have to come up with something here? Yeah, we have really a lot of, a lot of time. Um, and uh, okay, I just uh, gonna ask user, provide me please number of rows. And uh, number, uh, by default, it's written number of rows, such and such, it's gonna be maximum number of rows. I can write 13 as you, as, as you can imagine before, but that's fine. So by that, um, Perseus will provide the, um, um, like the visual component, which allows you to specify the parameters. So, but if we wanna get this uh, parameter in uh, processing activity, we have to actually call for this parameter. And you see this, this is exactly this functionality. It's asked how many parameters you, uh, how many par parameters, how many roles users specify. And uh, that's easy to do. We just not write 12, we just write, please parameters, give me a parameter called number of roles and take exactly that. Okay, so if I build that, I hope it's done. Yeah, it's done. And uh, we just can drag to the bin folder, replace. Let's run the sales. And uh, we're gonna generate find the matrix. Cool. But now if you go to the head, you see it's written 100. We can change it to let's say 15. And now we're gonna get not 100, not 12. We're gonna get exactly number which we wrote 15. It can be whatever number. Um, and that's actually how we can get uh, parameters, how we can actually interact with user. And that's why programming is fun. Uh, if pro all programs will run without parameters, without interacting, that's gonna be boring world. So, but let me show you one very important example um, why Perseo sometimes collapse and why it's actually being programmer is complicated job. Imagine that somehow I will write 200. So even though I have 100 of lines in my matrix, I will ask for 200. That's a bit, uh, you know, sounds like a mistake. And you get some really complicated mistake and uh, initially probably uh, incredibly uh, afraid of that. But that's how program works. So we basically, we expected some number between zero and 100 maximum value. So in order to actually, to solve this issue, we have to actually see what, what parameter is. So if, imagine if you wrote parameter n is less than zero, or you wrote parameter more when m data, so m data dot row count, if you happen to be uh, that kind of user, so then uh, we have to somehow deal with you. So, and uh, in this case, we're just gonna say processing for uh, error message and say, don't, don't do this again. Okay, cool. And uh, we're not gonna follow with anything else and we're gonna just return. So, and if you compile that, user will, um, will run it and uh, it's gonna be value out of the range. Then the, this nice message, not like very really complicated message we saw will appear. But honestly, for the sake of the finishing this example, I would like to show that how it looks like. So let's again, copy that. 
open PCOs. And uh, let's uh, generate random matrix. And uh, let's filter, filter. Let's take some crazy number, minus 15. I don't know how it can be. And result, don't do this again. So this actually works. It's really catching the error. Now, no, uh, the, no matrix is generated. It's really nice. So the truth is that we just now discuss with you some integer parameters, some uh, really like solid number. But you can imagine that uh, sometimes you would like to have double parameter. You have Boolean parameter. Sometimes you would like to provide file parameter, label, uh, like so just some, something writing string parameter so a lot of uh, like a lot of things we can do and you actually will get some something like that and you can get uh, from the user all these parameters so you can work with that and it actually works really nice but so i have i think just one minute to describe one simple case of the uh, usage of some uh, of uh, some uh, pro a programming language except c sharp so and you know i will try to do that so how can you do that? So for example, let's say um, Isabel uh, yesterday showed the, um, so I would say uh, Rudy Ives showed, showed the COP uh, uh, functionalities was written actually in R and I would like to integrate it in the Perseus. How can I do that? Yeah, you have to, in, for that purpose, uh, you have to find out Perseus R. Um, uh, let's check GitHub. So if you go there and you see the first link is Perseus R, R uh, package um, uh, interrupt. And there's actually really a good installation and development and, and uh, instruction how to develop a program. But I would like to highlight your, uh, like oh, maybe I will have to have time, I'm sorry. But also there's same, same exists for Perseus Py. So you can also integrate your code uh, into the, uh, you can write your code in Perseus and attach it to the uh, uh, to the Perseus uh, functionality. Uh, let's make sure that we actually have Perseus. Oh, sorry, do we have Python? We have Python. Let's sure that we have um, Perseus uh, Py. Yes, we have it. And actually it's incredibly cool because that means that I'm gonna make a really quickly example. So I'm just gonna take this readme example. What this example is doing is just basically it's uh, this Perseus Py library provides interface how to you can in, uh, communicate with uh, Perseus matrix how we can work with that and this is all done in Panda style so I'm gonna just copy this code um, save it as you see this functionality takes first 15 lines so um, I will save it as a Python code um, example. I mean, let's say head.py. Uh, okay, I hope it will save properly. It's gonna save in Perseus tutorial. You're gonna find it here. Oh, yeah, 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 it's saved there. So you see this head is here, so I will copy the Perseus plugin. So cool, That mean, what does it mean then? Uh, I can basically run this. So now I would like, to, I would gonna take, let's say not, um, I know, uh, just, I just finished this example on this. So let's not take 15, let's take um, 17. And um, and then um, how are we gonna do that? So actually we can do it here already. We can, uh, because of, we use the Perseus uh, interrupt. So the library, uh, which you can find uh, already sitting inside of Perseus, it's actually a plugin interrupt. That's exactly sitting here. How can you get this? So in order to get this, you can go to uh, Max Quant page, Perseus plugin, and you can find it here. So there's a link on GitHub and downloadable version. So you can actually really download the DLL. Uh, and as a result, you can put it here in the bin file folder and you can run it. So how does it work? So for now we explored with you external functionality. And what does it mean here? So we um, are providing, okay, let's select this matrix click external functionality uh, matrix python uh, the, uh, this will appear and as you see it's uh, sees the python and that's why it's uh, this green button and uh, you have to specify a way to find this uh, script a way to find this python script just wrote a few so we have to go to plugin programming and choose the head cool 
So which arguments we have? For now, no arguments, because as you see, our program just says, tells us, take the first 17, 17 lines. Yeah. So if I, uh, I can, I can not specify all these things. So if I run it now, uh, you see that we see the first 17 lines. And that's incredibly cool. I just show you one small update. Imagine now that's actually, I can say a, a new parameter and row, and uh, this is gonna be one of the arguments. The first argument is the name of the uh, Python script, next is second argument, et cetera, et cetera. So um, now I'm just, uh, instead of 17 writing here, 17, I'm just gonna parse this uh, uh, variable as argument, one of the arguments is string, and uh, write it and row. I'm gonna get that. And uh, now I can run a Perseus and actually run again external. It will find the Python. It will not find the Python. Please add Python uh, installed XCE to the path. It's gonna be the easiest. I mean, it would be the way to find Perseus to find the uh, Python um, runtime. And uh, if we click the head, we now can specify here 33 and so after some time, you see we got not 100 anymore, but we got exactly 33 lines. So one thing which probably you found annoying, what if you have more parameters? What if you have not just one, you have many, many more? Then you have to maybe specify in the command line with a comma, semicolon, uh, like uh, just as one string. But also, but if you actually would like to have uh, functionality, let's maybe go to the expression. And uh, you see in some analysis like that, you have huge amount of parameters, uh, edge R, uh, dispersion, et cetera. But for that, you actually need to uh, make some wrapper on a C-sharp, which, uh, um, uh, which will call uh, for the library, uh, which will call uh, all this R code. Um, I think this part of the tutorial, we will leave for the uh, for the video, which we're gonna make after summer school, we already have a long list of to-do things, including actually a few videos, such as a viewer, and um, and also uh, continue uh, like um, some uh, complicated stories uh, about plugin programming. But for for now, that's it.